Welcome back to the Keep Going Podcast with Vin Kennedy. I'm your host, Vin Kennedy. Today, we have the, I don't even know, it's a three-peat at this point, um, Jen Kennedy, Very my little special. sister. Special is a, uh, a really good word to describe you. So, <laughs> with that, um, I mean, why do we bring the people here today? Why did we bring the people here? I don't know. What do you mean? We're Marathon, marathon recap. We are, we are getting Jen into ran marathon. her first marathon. Um, I would say 15, 16 week prep, mm-hmm. less. Yeah, I would say like 15. 15? Because I had a couple like little... I would say 14 you know. because you had two weeks of injury. Mm-hmm. All right. 14 week marathon prep. Got to the marathon in Mesa, Arizona. And you crushed it. I did crush it. sub 445. Yeah, four, I think it was like 4.43 or something I finished in. It's good. Yeah, I wanted under five hours. And that you hit the goal. Mm-hmm. So we'll start kind of, let's just start with prep as a whole. What did you think of your first marathon prep? What were the pros? What were the cons? What was your takeaways? Um. Well, I, don't, I guess I'll start with negative and then go to positive. So uh, some cons, it was really time consuming, so I feel like at times... It was like tough to get it done, but I always did. It just like I had a couple of runs that were like nine, ten o'clock at night. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you left your long runs of like ten plus miles. Yeah, too. one time I ran eighteen miles and it was seven o'clock at night, so I didn't. On finish. a Sunday. Yeah. 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 So th- things like that, but that's also me. That's just the planning issue. But I also I work in the city. I do real estate, so it's like with the combination of all that, it's kind of hard to be like really. Um, I guess like regimented or whatever. I think it was a mix of it's obviously time consuming, but if you, I did a way better job of it my first prep. Oh, I thought you meant than me. Oh, well, that too. But yeah, I would wake true. up early, Saturday mornings, bang out long run, and bang out my long run, and then basically you have the whole day. Yeah. Where I think if you ever do another one, you do another one because you will do another one. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you want it. But when you do another one, I think that's what you have to do. You have to get in a better sleep schedule. Friday night, you got to kind of. Not if you anything. have longer runs, now you know. Yeah, um, no, for sure. So what were so obviously that was a con is that it could be time consuming, but you kind of um, managed. What yeah. were some pros? I think it like built more like discipline, confidence, all of that. Um, I also just like got better at running as a whole. Yeah. Um, I also got to experience nature like a lot, so that was nature. Yeah, okay. like you know, like running around, mostly around our neighborhood. I was gonna say so, nature. You know, like, I saw some like. Concrete. I, I kind of saw some houses that I may may knock on their door and be like, "Hey, are you ready to sell now?" Because I was walking, the old, the I was old running two for around one. a bunch. Yeah. But yeah, no, I like did get a, get to experience some nature, you know, appreciate, get a little sunlight, especially because like during the week I don't really go outside much because of work and stuff. So it was nice. Good. What like day one of when you started? Did you have any doubt that you would finish the race? Um. Initially, I think I didn't realize how hard it was and, like, what I actually was signing up for. And then halfway through when I was at my hard runs and then I sprained my ankle twice. And each time that I sprained my ankle, I was kind of like, am I going to be able to come back from this and, like, actually finish? Because I was just, like, I was so tired and I felt like I didn't heal fully. But I I did. It was just, like, all mental. Um, And then the day of the race, I had, like, no doubt because I knew that I was going to do it because I was like, I signed up for this. I um, put so much time into this, like, I'm not going to, like, stop until I... Yeah, you put the work in and you you built the confidence along the way, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing that you said to me, like, mid-marathon prep, which I thought was pretty funny, is that, like, I think it was a Saturday, you had, like, 11 miles, and you're like, I only have 11 miles today. Yeah. And it's funny because your PR before this was a half marathon, so that's Mm 13.1, and obviously you PR'd when you ran a 14-miler, as part of prep. Yeah. So for you to say, like, I only have 11 miles today. Yeah, it was And, like, funny. look at it as, like, a little <laughs> task was, like, really funny. But that shows the belief and the confidence that you're building yourself. Yeah. No, that's true. Every time that I had, like, I feel like over 14, we were saying, we felt like it was, like, a longer, yeah, longer, a longer mileage. Yeah. But, like, other than that, I was kind of like, oh, it's, like, a short run or whatever. Like, I would have showings in the morning, and I'd be like, oh, I'll just bang out, like, the 12 or 14. Yeah. Or, like, 11 that next day. Like, I was yeah. like, it's fine. Or, like, in the afternoon. Yeah, I feel like the deeper you get into it, like, for specifically marathon training, like, the 14 to 18 range is, like, a medium run. Yeah. Everything under that's, like, an easy run, and then everything over is, like, this is a long run. Yeah, and I didn't even get to 20 miles. 
Yeah, you never got to do 20 yeah. mile. You did 18 was your max. Yeah. So you were supposed to do 20 mile, but you rolled your ankle. Yeah, so. exactly. But it just also shows you that it's the consistency along the way and the easy runs along the way is what builds the aerobic base rather than the distance itself because you obviously were able to finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's true. What it's were, also super mental. Yeah. Well, that's actually my next topic here. Wow. So what was the mental talk like during prep, during the marathon itself? Do you have, like, specific things that kind of stick out? Um, I think whenever, like, I would get to a point in, like, prep where I was, like, on a long run and I felt like I wasn't, like, mentally there, like, where I wasn't as confident in my running or I just didn't want to do it. Like, a lot of the night runs that I had, I listened to podcasts. So, like, Jay Shetty and, like, I listened to a lot of ones that, like, would just take my mind off of it, but then I would learn and educate myself, like, while Along doing it. Yeah. yeah. How about, like... At the marathon specifically, did you listen to music? Like, what was your... I actually listened to music, and I thought I was going to listen to a podcast, because, like, the le what, the month before, that's all I listened to every single podcast. time I ran was podcasts. So I was like, oh, I don't even know. And, like, I had no plan. Like, I was about, I was starting to run. I forgot to put music on at first. And then, yeah. like, I went and I put it on, and I was like, wow. But, I mean, when we first started the run, the sun was rising, so it was so cool to look yeah. at. It was, like, really pretty. Absolutely. But um, I'm trying to think. You know, I think I just kind of, like, was, like, well, I ran the half, I ran 18, and, like, kind of just, like, hey, Jen, like, prove this to yourself that you could finish this, because I knew that I could. It's just, like, I wanted to actually do it, and even, like, mom and everything, like, they even admitted, mom admitted that she didn't know if she, I was going to actually finish yeah, it. Yeah, she was freaking out. Yeah. Because I, I was there for, like... An hour, right? Yeah, an hour and, like, 15 minutes, yeah. probably, waiting for you, so she was freaking out. Yeah. Um, but you did it. I did. All right. So the marathon specifically. So obviously the marathon was in Mesa, Arizona, mm -hmm. February 4th. And we traveled. What did you feel, you know, traveling and the couple days leading up? So I, it's funny because I like actually wasn't processing. I said this to you and Dan, yeah. like the whole time I was like, I don't feel like I'm running a marathon tomorrow. And even like the few days, like I was just like, we're in Arizona for no reason. Like, yeah, we're just, just here for, for vacation. Yeah. Like, we had our shakeout run that one night. And actually, it was, like, it wasn't even hot. It was, like, warmer, though. And I remember, like, my chest was bothering me a little when I was running. I said to you, I was, like, this is the first time I I felt that since, like, I really started consistently running. I was kind of freaking out. And then I was, like, yeah, I'll be fine. I think when it started to get real is when we went to go pick up our bibs um, at the, what is that called? The expo. expo. And I was, like, kind of, like... Oh my God, this is real now. Like, what if I didn't, I didn't actually sign up? Like, you know, yeah, all the, that went yeah. through my head. The worry comes in. Um, so we had our shakeout run on Thursday. The race was Saturday. Mm -hmm. You were in three miles, I believe. Yeah, it was three. So this happened, obviously I've ran two real marathons now, which also included traveling. Mm -hmm. And just something I've personally learned is that the day you're traveling is generally the day of your shakeout run. Mm -hmm. So you flew, you probably had less sleep, you didn't eat as to a plan as you normally would yeah. because you're in airports and whatever. Um, so the shakeout run has never felt good. Even the week leading up when you taper down, I personally get like these little aches and pains, yeah. which doesn't make sense because you're running less miles. So your body you think is like completely it's good, true. but I think you're just like working that stuff and flushing it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's probably why you felt like that during the shakeout. And then, yeah, I remember you saying like, that you didn't feel like we were going to run a marathon. And I was like, well, you're going to, I promise. And it's going to come. Yeah. And the race is going to start and around. And then I just kept drinking so much water, like the days leading up to yeah. it. Because I was getting like nervous. I was like, what if I just get dehydrated? And then we were talking about the New York City Marathon and how people bonked. And I was like, what if I bonk? Like, well, I was it, freaking out. It was really hot in New York um, for those people. And then also the issue with drinking too much water is that you flush out your electrolytes. So we were, you were taking LMNT. I had you drink some salt water as well. Yeah. Um... Oh, and then you asked um, what else I, like, felt before, right? So then I was on the bus on the way there, and I was really to the nervous. Race. And I was nervous, yeah. like, on the... Well, the whole I, morning was a little stressful. The morning was stressful because our friend was a little nah, bit No, it late. wasn't even his fault, though. Like, <laughs> I'm we, kidding. I should have woke up earlier, but yes, obviously... Then that was not Dan's no, fault. He I'm, set his alarm for he set his alarm for PM instead of AM. So. I was already awake, so it didn't really matter. Yeah. I was more like, oh wow, this is gonna be like really quick that we're doing all this. But yeah. I had my food. Like I had already ate breakfast by the time they both got out of bed. Like, That's not true. Yeah, I finished my. I was up. I was reading. Oh. Well. Anyway, so yes, Dan's alarm didn't go off. 
So we had to wake up Dan and then kind of, we were still piecing things together. So like we all kind of rushed out mm-hmm. the door together. Um, so that was a little stressful only because they said you had to be there 430. I think we got there like 435. Yeah. Didn't end up Maybe mattering. even like 440. Yeah. And it didn't matter. Um, and then the lines for the buses were long. It was a little cold. It was really cold yeah. when we got like from the bus, like waiting for the bus. And then when we got off the bus and we were waiting to run, both of those times were getting off the bus, waiting to run was really cold because you really were all, cold. you were up in a mountain. We started on the top of a mountain basically. Is that what it was? You think? Yeah. Where, when you started running, which way were you, where were you no, going? Yeah, no, Straight right. downhill, right? Yeah. It's a mountain buddy. Yep. Okay. Okay. So there were heaters there. Uh, I kind of went into this on my solo podcast. I'm not going to get too in-depth. We were huddled around the heater. We both had to use the bathroom. We were in mm-hmm. the bathroom line, realizing that the race was going to start in 10, 5, 10 yeah. minutes. Didn't have time. We're not the bathroom line. We were, was like, not putting moving. our bibs on each other. Had to put like. the bibs on. Had to <laughs> grab, like, your water. I forgot my salt. Um, she made the giant mistake of when you were running a marathon, you have a drop bag, or some places <laughs> don't do a drop bag at all. What a drop bag is, is you put your belongings as far as, like, if you're going to not run with the sweatshirt, you take the sweatshirt off, you put it in the bag, you take your bib number at the end of the race, and you pick up your bag. Jen decided, let me bring my whole wallet no, to no, marathon. No, no, no. So what happened was we had the expo the day before, and I stuck my wallet in there because we were at the expo, and I didn't want to carry, like, both the bag and the wallet. And then the next morning, I totally, like, didn't look at the bag at all, and I just brought it with me, not checking. And past me would have probably started crying, freaking out, calling my mom, like, what do I do, like, bugging. And instead, I just took out all my all my licenses and important things, left a couple cards in there that, like, gift cards and stuff, a few dollars in cash, and I was like, if they get it, they get it, you know? Yep. So, <laughs> so there was that. Also, kind of want to touch on how you mentioned... The bus ride there, you started getting, like, a little bit of anxiety and jitters. Yeah, yeah so when I was, like, um, where was, when was that? In, like, middle school, I, I tried to run cross-country. Tried because I didn't actually ever run a race. I was about to start um, the race, and I got an anxiety attack. And I, I'd never experienced one before. It was really, really scary. And I started freaking out. And then I think, like, the nurse or my mom, whoever was there, came. I never ran again. And I haven't gotten that feeling like with running or anything like athletic wise in like since then honestly that was the first time ever how did you combat it i um i think it's because running now has become like therapy and that kind of stuff to me too like movement is what is it movement is medicine or whatever they say so i think that that um is where i kind of was like wait a second like i know that this only helps me it's not something that's actually hurting me and that's dangerous and so I kind of just was like, you, you know, you've you've dealt with this before. And I just, I don't know, I guess I just pushed myself through it and started talking like positively to myself. And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's, everybody gets nervous. I was nervous mm-hmm. too, like just sitting on the bus. This yeah. is only my second real race marathon, third marathon as a total. And it doesn't matter. I ran 12,000 miles in seven months leading up to it. And it doesn't matter. Like you mm-hmm. still get nervous. Yeah. The people that win these races still get nervous to start. Yeah. Um, I think the two things that basically, I don't even want to say average, I just want to say majority of marathoners have on their side is that mm. you're not winning this race. Like you're not going there to even win this race. You're, you're chasing personal PRs or yeah. just like a goal of like, you know, you want to hit, you want to run a marathon in Arizona, like whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing, like it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. And then two is that like, this isn't something new. You've done this the whole entire prep. You're just moving your feet. Yeah. Like More of course, people around you definitely because you're always only, by yourself, <laughs> which could help. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's kind of just that where it's like you're just running. It's as simple as it gets. It's as basic as it gets. And it's so funny that our minds play like that trick on us of like this is some grand massive yeah. event where it's like it is, but at the same time it's like all you have to do is just move your feet. Yeah, that's it. No, exactly. And I feel like that's that's what the huge difference is in during prep. Obviously, like we're we didn't even run together really at all like much Never. we ran together like None. what our track workouts and that was kind of it and that we, what well, we did Only like two or three yeah. together um so it was like it's a very like what is it it doesn't word? have to be solo, like a solo but sport it doesn't have to be thing. but yeah well for i feel like for me it was yeah so then when i started running i was like wow there's a lot of people here and like you said you were like don't run fast right away and i was like how do i know well, that's one of the big things is that like i feel like anybody that's going into 
their first marathon, their first race is that mm-hmm. that gun goes off and everybody sprints and it's yeah. like, I need to be with the pack. And yeah. like, it's something I caught myself doing this time around too, where first marathon in Colorado, the pace was, I think I was supposed to run like a 7.35, mm-hmm. even flat the whole time. And I looked down and I was at like 7.05. Now I'm dealing with altitude and I'm like, I need to slow down. And here too, I think I looked down again, you're rolling, you're literally flying down a hill the first mm-hmm. two miles in Mesa. So that was like, I'm looking down, it's like 650 and I'm like, all right. That's and what I did too. I looked and I was at yeah. like a nine something pace and I was like, I said I was going to start at 11. Like. Right. So you got to kind of, but it's fine. I mean, you look yeah. at it, you notice and you, you tip back And it's a funny because a lot of people then were like passing me. And at first I was getting like a little like mental where I was like, I don't want anyone to pass me because I was like, I know I'm capable of running faster than this. But then every time that I started running really quick, I would kind of take a step back and be like, wait you have 26 miles like you have you know if i'm on mile two i have 24 miles left right. like you can't just keep running so quick like that no absolutely i think there's two things with that is that and i kind of did it on some of my longer runs that had paces involved mm-hmm. where my watch wouldn't sink right away and i talked about this in the solo episode too and like so just say you know your watch is saying 720 mm-hmm. or 730 and you're supposed to be at 715 you like sprint to try and get it and then you you check and you're down to like a six minute mile yeah and then you taper back a little bit but then you're gassing yourself out every time you do that so you got to be careful with yeah that. it's like a very like stop and go that's what yeah. i did a little bit in the beginning you just gotta then, be wary of it yeah so sometimes better just to go based off feel and especially like you had such a big window to play with as far as like i just want to be under sub five hours mm-hmm. so you really could have just taken it really easy and then went hard yeah like i started the with the 450 pace group that's what i did like i started Four, I that's where this. i yeah um, well, I was running and then I saw them and I was like, you know what, maybe this is like where I should be. So I started running with them. And then after a while, to be honest, I felt like they were like, not holding me back, but I was holding myself back by not going a little quicker. Right. And I was like, I think I'm, you know, I want to challenge myself a little bit more than this. So I left after like half a mile with them. Yeah. But. And then also to the point that you said where like people are passing you, it's funny because I had a couple conversations with people that wanted to run faster times than I ran. Mm-hmm. And then again and some people passed me too especially in Colorado I saw it where people I started with finished way before me Mm -hmm. but it's funny because like it's one of those things where you get too excited and like I saw these guys like cooking it and then I saw them you know and they'd sprint past me at mile seven and then I'd see them at 14 and they're dying out and they're yeah that it's so funny you said that because it's exactly what I noticed too I I was talking to a woman actually and she said that she's like every time she's like I have a really good pace and then I get to like mile like 18 and then i'm shot and they always say that's when the race begins anyway but yeah they say, she said that to me and i was like wait a second now i need to slow down because yeah. i don't want to burn out no marathon starts between like 16 to 20. yeah so um one thing i want to go over is fueling mm-hmm. so we did i did goo packs every four miles i started taking the goo pack straight from the marathon because they had caffeine in it, it kept giving me a little bit of an oh, extra Oh, really? Edge. I never took any of yeah. those because I was like... If I you never, never trained with them, then you shouldn't have them. I never tried them, so I didn't want it to upset my stomach or right. something because those upset your stomach. And when you upset easily. your stomach, what happens? Well, I don't want to have to poop and run. That's right. for and I, sure. I had to poop before the race. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. In the woods next to a cactus. Anyway. No, please cut that. <laughs> no, don't cut it. Leave it. So, and, and then salt. So obviously I forgot my salt, met up with, you I had a salt. You kill me. <laughs> you took mine. No, I didn't really use salt. Oh, uh, I'm not yeah. gonna get it. If it works for you, it works for you. I'm bigger. So I think personally I burned through electrolytes quicker. So I did every four miles, I did a gel pack. I didn't actually put the element T, like the electrolyte in my water at first. Would you eat the powder? I just drank the water. Okay. Oh, I just was drinking plain water, and then I realized, like, ha- like a few minutes into the race, I was like, I never put the lec- so you element T. So every time that there was Gatorade, sometimes I skipped them, but for the most part, I hit every aid station. The only thing that sucks is, like, when you run, obviously, like, people go in a line, and, you know, the volunteers are great, but they're a little bit, like, they're just kind of, like... Oh, like handing you They're water. They're a little slow, like yeah. passing it to you. So I like would literally just like chug it really quick, stop for a second just so that I could swallow it and then just keep running. Yeah. And a lot of other people would just kind of like walk with it, but I was like, I don't want to stop at all. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I had the gel packs every four miles. And then when I got to mile 18, it got super mental because I had never ran more than 18. Right. So then I started um, having them every two. 
Which is fun. And then when I got to like 24, I didn't have really any gel packs left, but I had those salt tablets that I also had every like, I think hour you said to take yeah. two. So I took them every hour. That would be a thousand milligrams of salt every hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So that was fueling. And then. Yeah. Oh, they had the gummy worms too, but I didn't have any. At mile 24, right? It was yeah, like it was the 40 kinda, mile. They had like that a, and beer. And I was like, I don't, yeah, no judgment, beer. but. Cup of beer and gummy worms. It's yeah. a party mile, they call it. Um, yeah, definitely not my MO either. Yeah. What? So what kind of conversation? So you mentioned like having really good conversations I with did. people. I did. I met like two people. So you want to kind of go into that? Sure. So honestly, I didn't think that I was going to meet anyone. I was just running. So I was like, you know, I'll be in my zone. I'm probably not going to like talk to anyone. And when I was running, um, I was running next to this one woman for a while and we were at like literally the same pace. So I turned to her and I was like, oh, have you ran a marathon before? Cause I was like, you know, just to make conversation, make it go a little quicker. I was only on like mile six at this point. Uh, she's like, yeah, I've ran like three. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Like, that's awesome. She's actually from Jersey, but she lives in Arizona now and we were going back and forth and just like talking about all these different things. Um, and we had a good conversation, but the conversation that really stood out to me, I was running and this older man was wearing a shirt and I didn't realize when I first started talking to him, but it was the 50 miler like club or whatever. So he ran 50, 50 marathons, um, in 50 States. So he was saying that this is his, I was like, Oh, how many marathons have you done? He's like, Oh, like this is my, like, what did he say? I think like 55th or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow this is my first one like I yeah. was like really excited and he was like wow that's awesome and I was like yeah I was like but how were the you know all these you know marathons like what was the state that stood out to you the most you know and I was asking him all these different questions and he was explaining how like it's a whole club and during COVID he actually went to one of them in Hawaii and um the race got canceled and they were still gonna run it and they got there and the, uh, the administrator person was like, oh, if, you know, if there's 10 of you here, then it'll count for the 50 states. There was only five that showed up. So they just ran a marathon in Hawaii just to run one because it didn't even count. But it was like, that's Does cool. Did he to go me. back there? He went back already oh, okay. and he completed it. Like he finished all 50. Um, but I just thought it was really cool because this guy was probably like in his, I would say early 50s. Mm -hmm. um, and like he ran... 50 marathons yeah, in 50 insane. states and he ran in berlin too which was really cool and he's trying to get into like tokyo so he's trying and to do all the majors he's trying to do yeah. all the majors um and so that stood out to me and it's funny after i was telling vin and dan i was like you know what i didn't think that i was gonna like want to become a marathon person like a runner right, you know you are if you run I, at all you're a runner if you run a marathon yeah at all, you're i'm a, a marathon, marathon runner now but I was like, I don't really think like, you know, I think that this is going to be like a one and done because like I enjoyed prep, but it's a challenge and I have a lot of other things going on in my life right now. So I was like, I kind of want to focus on other things, you know, and put like not maybe run again. Um, and then after I talked to him and just like the atmosphere of the marathon itself, and that's what I kept saying to him, I was like... I think I'm going to run 50 marathons. So you're going to do 50 marathons, 50 states? 50 states, states yeah. But I have to plan it all because I, and I kind of want to end in New Jersey because that's what he said to me. He's like, I wish I ended in my home state. He this lives in cool Colorado. One, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. So. I'll definitely join you for all the ones that I can that don't interfere with my other events. Yeah. And then I'll complete it at some point as well. That's we should race to do it. Whoever does it first wins. Yeah, I'm probably going to win though. Probably not. Yeah, but if you have 100 milers and stuff. Yeah, but I'll run, like, five in a year. Yeah, I don't know how many I'm going to yeah. run yet. I, I have to map it all out. All right. But I just thought it was awesome. Absolutely. Like, it's really cool. Well, I think it shows, too. I mean, obviously, you're running 26 miles, so anybody that you're going to encounter that's doing that has some sort of mental drive or mm -hmm. mental fortitude that you're most likely going to click with, right? Yeah, it's true. They say, I think it's less than 1% of people run marathons, so... Wow. One percent of the population runs marathons. So obviously you're in a very unique niche, niche, you know, population. So you're gonna run into growth mindset type people that you click with. It's true. What specifically stood out to you about like the Mesa Arizona marathon? Obviously you came with me to Boulder. In Boulder's defense, that was only the second year they ever put that marathon on. I believe this was Mesa's fifth year. Yeah. I mean I liked Mesa more just because It was a bigger race too. The atmosphere and like 
I didn't run Boulder, right. so I didn't get to experience it, like, as much. But even when we started the Mesa one, oh, my God, like, that su- sunrise was beautiful. Yeah. And just every part of it. And then they had, like, little signs in the middle. One was that, like, mile, like maybe like 12 to like 14 or something they had like really funny signs i posted a couple on my like instagram but one was like um your pre- your marathon prep was longer than like kim kardashian's marriage yeah and then there was like other ones that just said like you're cute when you run like they're funny and yeah. then there were some that were like kind of mean where <laughs> they were just like i don't know it was like get over like with this like get this marathon done please so that like we can go home and like wrap ourselves in a blanket like weird things like that interesting yeah so what would you say your like current relationship with (laughs) running is um i haven't ran since actually i wanted to run today and i didn't but i'll probably but this is like the allotted time off like you're supposed to kind of start i have a massive blister on my toe too so like i couldn't really you know well so how do you plan on obviously you said you want to run 50 marathons in 50 states that doesn't mean you have to do another one even within this year you're 23 yeah so what are you thinking like plan wise like what my plan is i actually am going to nashville soon so i was gonna see there's probably not one there exactly when i go how many months no it's not i don't know if you have enough time yeah um, I ran a half ma- half marathon in Nashville. Oh, really? Not oh, when race, you trained, yeah. yeah. So you could run through it. it um, but yeah, you were saying like to do Philly and New York first. So I'm thinking I, I just think do, do the first. local ones. Yeah. Obviously less expensive because you could just come back home and they're close. Obviously yeah. New York's very hard to get into, but it's possible. Yeah. Um, so when do you think you'll get back to running? Um, I would say like next week I want to start just doing some shakeout runs and Easy stuff miles. like that. Yeah, yeah, like nothing crazy, but. Um, I'll probably do that. And then because I want to do the 50 States, like I kind of want to sit down and like map it out, but I also feel like it's hard cause life gets in the way and like, yeah. I'm going to do it. I just have to figure out like how many is possible to do in like a, a year. year. Yeah. And also since I'm young, it's like, maybe I should do more now and then do less as I get older because then it's like, okay, like you never know, like in like eventually i'm gonna have children and stuff it'd be cool to eventually <laughs> long ways away <laughs> but um, um yeah no yeah. i know what you mean okay it's, you kind of touched on it, but like how are the feet doing how are the dogs i see yours like really disgusting yeah, my feet are fucked up my um, pinky toe looks like it has frostbite it's disgusting it's all black you literally look like you have nail i really want to show i want to show the whole no i know how are it's your feet really disgusting um I was, it's funny because when we finished, or even before, I should say, I should preface by saying before, Dan and Vin were like, there's no way that you're going to be able to go to dinner, do this, you're going to be shot, your feet are going to be tired, like your legs are going to be tired. I rallied, I have to say. You are on such a runner's high though, too, that it's like. I know, I know. But even, yeah, I guess. So most likely you wouldn't be able to go out and we were right. Why? We didn't go out. We went out to dinner, though. Yeah, but, like, you wanted to enjoy Phoenix, Scottsdale. True. Yeah. I, yeah, like, I was, so then. Because you're a child. I'm not a child. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, but then I was kind of the next day a little bit. Walking like, around a little weird, a little fucked up. A little bit like I had to stick up my butt. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I was walking, and I went, I lifted the next day with you guys. Yeah. Um, which I was impressed with. I didn't do an insane amount. I did like four exercises um, and like really light reps, but it felt good to get my body moving again. But um, yeah, my feet, uh, blisters all over. I actually have never had a blister like I did on my big toe, like this time around. It's still there actually. It's literally like a bubble. And I also have like swollen feet, like an old lady. Like, well, I did. I don't anymore. I mean, you don't, you know, it's just a tough look. Yeah. My feet are normally not bad. I don't, I don't think anybody's feet are good. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like my feet aren't, like, gross. But you have that weird, you have that weird foot thing. Like, you really like feet. I don't have <laughs> yeah. a weird foot yeah. thing. Anyway, so what would you, what are tips that you would give to someone running their first marathon? Um, or getting And getting into running, both. I would say to just start is, like, the biggest thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, don't let your mind um get in the way of anything and also just like 
I don't know, like, get someone like you or, you know, Dan to, like, write you up a plan um, so that you can kind of, like, map out what you're going to expect um, and then kind of go from there. Because I think that people that try to do it themselves and they're like, well, I'm not only confident to run four miles, like, that's great and all. But then, like, you're never going to actually run, like, say, 10 it's going to take you so much longer if you do it on your own. Because, like, I know for me, like, I would have never ran that 18 miles the way that I did because I would have been freaked out, worried. But, like, I knew that you mapped it all out. I was like, okay, this plan is, like, what I was supposed to do. Like, I'm prepared for it. But I think sometimes people, when they do it themselves, it's not a bad thing necessarily. But you, it's not mapped out good enough. And then you also just don't give yourself a fair shot. And right. then also, like, there's certain things that probably... Like, you probably could have ran, like, 10 miles a couple weeks before, but you just mentally weren't, like, you felt like you could Well, you don't know know? what you don't know. Exactly, I think I think everybody should have a coach in most things that they do because Mm -hmm. a coach knows more or thinks of a different side of it. And it's just, even if you know a ton, it's good to bounce the ideas off each other. Yeah. And even, like, hydration, too, is, like, a big thing, too. Yeah, that's that's Um, a And nutrition, because, like... I don't think I really ate the cleanest, but I didn't eat bad either. Like I had a very balanced diet and what I did was because it's like, it was around the holidays and stuff. I kind of ate like a little bit like better for the holidays, but I still didn't eat great. But because I was running, I just used the running as my cardio, which in a normal prep, like you probably shouldn't do. You should probably eat like pretty clean. Um, But just because the holidays, I wanted to. If you want the best results. Yeah, I would stick to a... A consistent diet. Mm-hmm. But the balance worked for me, so. Yeah, absolutely. And do you have any other last remarks? No, I don't think so. So you think your first marathon, the whole prep, the race itself, was a success? I think so, yeah. You do it again? I wanted to say no, but I do want to do it again. Yeah. That's what it does, right? It's like a little addictive. Yeah? Yeah. I think you should, uh, you should make it known now. When's the next marathon? November? I actually am supposed to run, when is it? I'm supposed to run a half in... Brooklyn half, April 23rd. And then I'm supposed to run a half for Sarah because she's never ran when a is half that? marathon. October? Yeah, but you'll be in marathon shape by then. Yeah. So maybe If I'll... you run in November. Let's do a November marathon together. Another one. Yeah, it depends where it is. Outer Banks? If it's, I would like to go somewhere warm, but I want to do it. I was talking to that guy that did the 50 states. We could cut this part, but, um, continue. I think that we should try to plan like week trips, even though that's hard because of work. Yeah. But we could do it. We'll make it happen. Or maybe even just like a little bit longer. So we have a longer window. Yeah. So you can like enjoy the, pl- that's why I want to do 50 states. Cause I want to be able to, well, we should do it on places. like you get there Friday, run Saturday. You're that's what he said. He's week. like, you should always. Like, have, like, a day before and then run. Yeah, and then be there for a couple days. Yeah. All right. That's all we got. Thank you for listening.